Welcome to The Colour Cave. I'm Gem and I like to play with art supplies. This is part two of colouring for beginners and today we are going to take the next step with our one pencil shading. If you haven't seen the original video on using one pencil to create gradients in our coloured pictures, if you just want to click the card in the corner, see, did that right this time, learning then you can go and watch that first video and then come back here and carry on. The idea today is just to expand on this skill. And again, this is brilliant if you're absolutely shiny new to colouring and just want to see where to get started. So let's go. This was the image that we created in lesson one, um, just to demonstrate uh, the different types of pressure that you can put on your pencil to give you a nice effect. So we're going to go from this and we're going to take it a step further. Just so that everyone that's new to colouring has some sort of basis to start from, it is one of these hobbies where you learn as you go along and your skills are always developing and changing and sometimes you don't even realise it's happening. So this step really is just the next link in the chain as far as I'm concerned. Now the principle I'm going to talk about is something that is very obvious to anyone who has ever tried to uh, take a class in art. But one thing I have learned about colouring as a pastime and also about the colouring community is that it really is for everyone and there are so many different types of people and different reasons for colouring um, and I think that's one of the, the, the beauties of the colouring community. Um, so today we're going to talk about light sources. Now as I say if you've done any sort of drawing or took any sort of art, even high school art, you're probably already familiar with this concept so perhaps this video might not be for you. However, if you are absolutely shiny new to colouring and you're just looking to start enhancing and taking that next step, this is for you. So when we look at these pictures, what we are trying to establish is, before we even start, is there is a light source and we want to figure out where it's coming from because that will affect the light and shaded parts of the picture. Now, it's really, really simple to do and if it's something you've not really thought about in terms of your colouring, I'm pretty sure you've thought about it in everyday life. Starting up in this left-hand corner here, I do have, just before I start, I do have a selection of various coloured pencils here. These are Prismacolor pencils. Um, I've chosen these colours just because they're dark uh, so that they show up well on the, on the paper and on the camera and you can see clearly. Obviously, you don't have to use these colours. You can do it with any colour you like and again, that is the beauty of this. At this point in filming as well, I would just like to say um, a hello and a lovely big thank you to my eight subscribers. I am absolutely overjoyed that there are people that want to watch these videos and want to see more. So thanks very much, guys. And if you are enjoying the content and you're not a subscriber, you can hit the subscribe button and you can comment and like the video and do all that kind of stuff. Anyway, back to the task in hand. So as I was saying, the first thing we want to do is establish a light source and what I'm going to do with these little guys here is just show you what happens when that light source comes from different angles. Um, so these top three here, we're going to use the, the three most common directions of light, uh, so to speak. So this first one here, the light we're going to suggest is coming from above. Now again, if at any point you're unsure when you're actually getting to one of your illustrations that you're going to colour, the easiest thing to do is get your, get your mobile phone out and get the torch out and shine it in the direction or in any direction if you want to figure it out because that will give you a good idea and it, you will see it cast shadows against your paper or against any other objects that might be surrounding what you're doing and that helps you to figure out where you want the light and dark to go. Now coming from top down like this, the lightest part will always be closest to the light source. So I should have made that more fun, shouldn't I? Like, let's make it a little shiny sun, whee! Um, so the lightest part is always going to be closest to your light source and the darkest part is going to be further away. So this is the most straightforward method. Uh, this is particularly handy if you're doing a larger picture, if you're doing a, you know, like a full page picture and it's, um, it's really handy for that if you want to try and keep things simple but you still want some sort of impact on your picture. So going on from what we already know and what we've learned before from our last um, tutorial 
is that you want to start with your dark area and make it lighter and lighter and we can do this by building up in layers. So I'm going to turn this slightly just because it's easier on my hand and I know some of you don't like it so I'm sorry guys. And what we're going to do is just with a medium pressure I'm going to start to colour at the bottom of our toadstool. Now because it is uneven I'm going to go in and I'm going to do all the little parts that are in line with each other just so that when we start to work upwards it's going to be easier to get that smooth gradient from the heavier pencil into the lighter pencil. Now the advantage of this as well is that if you start nice and light you can go back in and darken the areas that you feel aren't dark enough. If you press too hard to begin with on your paper it is very very difficult even with, with the best will in the world and the best eraser in the world, you're still going to struggle to lighten up areas that you've pressed too hard on. So you can see now that already, even in this first layer, I'm really starting to lighten up and release the pressure on the pencil. And I'd just like to note at this point as well, look how far up I am holding the pencil. I am miles away from where I would normally hold a pencil if I was writing or if I was scrubbing on something really hard. If you're not in full control of the pressure of your pencil, this is a great way to train your hand. So it, it stops you being able to press so hard. So there we go, and I'm just kissing the paper and I've actually stopped. So in this top part from about here upwards, I actually don't have any pencil on the paper at all. Now again, I've done that deliberately because I can go back in and put some colour in if I want to, but if it's already down, I can't take it away. So I, what I'm doing now is just going back to where I was and the same pressure again, and I'm starting to move in my little circular motions because I want to cover up this sort of uh, grainy lined effect with my second layer. So I'm just pressing the same, but I'm using my little circular motions. And you can see there, and just in that little section that I've done already, it is quite considerably darker than the other ones. So this second layer is really starting to bring out some colour now. And again, all I'm doing is watching across the way to see that everything is going to sort of match up. And any areas that maybe look a little bit patchy, you know, and that, that aren't quite as dark, then I can go back in and just put a little bit more pencil down to even things up. And that is one of the wonderful things about pencils. One of the things I love about pencils is you can go back so many times and you can keep adding and you can keep fiddling about with it. I nearly said a really Scottish word again there. Um, we talk about footering as in like a foot to footer. Um, and footering is basically just, uh, you know, fiddling about and messing about with something. So there endeth your Scottish lesson for the day. <laughs> All right now, so we're just gonna keep going, keep going. Now I'm starting to lighten up my pressure a little bit now as I'm getting further up. Again, keeping the same principle that the light is coming down from the top. So we want to, although we are adding another layer, it needs to be a light layer because it needs to, to be in cohesion with the layer that's underneath it. And this is really just to start sort of buffing out my little scribble lines from the first, the first layer. So there you go. Now you can see that starting to come along nicely and you can see what I'm getting at in that, <coughs> excuse me, furthest away from the light source is dark. It is dark, dark, dark. And as we go up, it is getting lighter and lighter. Now it doesn't look like much on its own, especially just like this where we've just started but when you put this into practice in a picture and you manage to keep that light source consistent across the picture that's where you get the impact and that's what makes it worthwhile and you can see it is just so 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 simple I mean there really isn't much to it at all Okay, so we get the general idea that that is a top down, dark at the bottom, light at the top, gentle gradient, go in with a couple of layers. Let's move on to the next one now. And let's decide that the light source is on this side. Ta-da! 
So the light is going to be coming in this direction. So it is going to bounce off this area here. So our gradient, instead of going from light to dark up and down the way, it is going to go in a diagonal exactly the same direction as these arrows. Now again, let's start at the darkest part. That is the easiest thing to do is to start at the darkest part. So that is going to be the opposite side to where the light source is. So it's going to be in this corner here. So same principle as before. I'm going to turn the page around now so that we're the right way up <clears throat> and go from this direction. And I'm going to start in this corner. And again, I'm using med medium pressure. And I'm going to make it lighter and lighter as I head over towards the light source up here. And again, this is up to you. Use your eye, step back and look and try and judge. Once you've put that first layer down, whether or not you've brought the dark part of the gradient out far enough or whether you need to maybe darken down and keep the, the pressure slightly heavier until you get further over. So you can see at this point, the darkest part is only this tiny little triangle here in the corner. Now I'm thinking to myself, nah, that's not gonna have much of an impact um, when I look at the picture, because let's face it, it's a visual thing. You want it to look nice, that's the whole idea. So I'm gonna keep that slightly heavier pressure on the go and just bring it a bit further over before I start lightening up. And then after that, I can go back and I can lighten the pressure and just add that very light second layer, start to tidy things up a bit as well. Okay, now, although I have got my light source here and it's going diagonally, I'm also taking into consideration the shape of the object. This is a a rounded object so rather than having a, a sort of quite a straight defined area of pale or white in this case which is the reflected light I have brought a tiny little bit of blue down into this corner and what that does is it gives the highlighted area a slight curvature which gives us the illusion of the, the curve of the actual object so that's again something that's really simple and straightforward that you can just add in to give your piece a little bit more dimension and a little bit of depth. So now again, I'm just back to building up the layers here. Just make this a little bit darker. And now again, something that's quite interesting is everybody colors differently and what is one person's medium pressure is not necessarily another. I've seen some amazing works of art um, that have been colored by someone that is quite heavy handed um, and this may be their lighter touch and it, what it does is gives really bright and vivid pictures and I think they look amazing. I'm kind of in the middle. Um, I, I generally, um, especially when I was learning to sketch, I found out that I was quite a heavy handed person um, and it's something that I've managed to sort of train out of myself a little bit because I was getting really bad hand cramps and carpal tunnel and stuff um, and that's not much fun. So don't, you know, don't hope or expect that this is the, you know, the exact pressure and the exact way that your, your colouring is going to turn out. Everyone is different, but it's about learning to know yourself and know your hand. And it, eventually it just sort of develops into a style and that, but you know, that becomes your style. Um, and that's the, the lovely part about it as well. You can watch five or six people colour the same picture, even using the same palette and it never turns out the same way. And I think that is the beauty of it. Okay, so there we go. That is a left-hand light source uh, with a, a sneaky little bit of um, contouring, if you like. Moving on to this little guy now. Now, this is, the, this is my favourite. If the light is coming from the other direction. So we're going on the same principle as we did here, but it's just flipped over. It's in the opposite direction. So if I start my dark part here, Now again, this is a slightly odd shape. Well, I suppose it's not an odd shape for a toadstool, but you know what I mean, um, in terms of doing our gradient. Just doing exactly what I did before. There's nothing different and there's nothing new. I'm getting impatient here. I'm scribbling away furiously to slow my circles down a little bit. So I'm gonna bring that color right round into this bottom corner again to give the, the illusion of the curve. And I'm going to bring it up here. And 
And there we go. Now I'm going to make this slightly darker down this edge because the light is going to bounce off here, which means this side's not going to see much of the light. So again, I'm just really, really light little circles and I'm going to kind of line against the black and just gradually lessen the pressure so that it blends in with the gradient that I'm starting to create here. Just lighten that up there. And then I'm going to go back over, again medium pressure. And again, I'm going to bring this sort of deeper part out further. So I'm going to keep my pressure down a little bit further out, let it travel out into the middle of our toadstool. And then I'm going to start lightening up, start to smooth things out. The other thing that you can use if you have one is a colourless blender. Um, I do have them. I use them sometimes, the, the blending pencils. And I do recommend the Prismacolor ones because they seem to work with everything. And... Uh, you can smooth out some of these little circles and lines just to give a, you know, a, a sort of more of a sheen. Um, so that's something that you can do. If you want a really smooth, shiny surface, that's pretty good. Having looked at a lot of mushrooms and toadstools, again, I live in the, the countryside, so I, I do tend to see quite a lot of this in day-to-day -day life just when I'm, you know, rumbling about doing my thing. And they have an amazing amount of texture, actually. Um, I, I just always assumed that mushrooms and things would be quite smooth, but it's not necessarily the case. Some of them are really bumpy and lined and sort of rumbly, tumbly looking, uh, which is quite cool. All right, so I'm just darkening up down this bottom edge now as well. Again, just along this side, because again, I'm just thinking about how the light's hitting it. And just blend that in a little bit. All right then, so that is the, th the three easiest and most simple forms of light sources, the direct top down and from the top left and the top right. And you can see there, that actually looks quite nice. But the other thing we need to think about as well, and this is something that's really important when you're doing this, is you need to think about the whole object, not just what's on the top. So with these two down here, what I wanted to do is show you how to tackle what's going on underneath, just to give you some examples. So obviously with these three light sources, they're all coming from above um, and I'm just going to keep it simple like that for now. But when we think about the underneath, obviously that, that has to be taken into account that the light's coming from somewhere around this area. So with these bottom parts here, the first thing we need to think about is underneath in here. Now this looks like quite a sort of shaded enclosed spot. If we were going to use our blue, for example, we would want it really, really dark up here because this is the part that is directly underneath the curve of the cup. So I would make that really dark and also in against the stock as well. Now, same principle. Now, I'm pressing a bit harder this time, though, and I'm just going to get that little... If I think about that as overhanging, then that's going to make that really, really dark in here. And again, lighten it up. Now, the key to areas like this is consistency. Sometimes it doesn't really matter. Now, I proved this in the last video um, using the butterfly as an example. It doesn't have to be absolutely technically correct. If you keep it consistent over the whole of whatever it is you're colouring, it's still going to look good. Um, for example, if you're going to do that, you wouldn't start really dark on this side and make it lighter up here because it's not going to look right. So consistency is the key and making sure everything is quite uniform. Now, I'm assuming that although my light source is coming from somewhere around the top, that it's actually coming from this direction, if I do that with the pencil. <laughs> um, so what that's going to give me is a lighter area here because it's going to catch the underside of this because it protrudes so far down from underneath the cup. So I'm just lightening the pressure up there to give that little bit of light that's caught, which is just lovely. And a wee tiny bit darker just in beside the stock because obviously that's gonna cast a little shadow as well if it's coming. I should, I should really do, I can't do <laughs> that sort of angle. So we'll do the same on the other side. We'll just keep that nice and, nice and even. So again, really, really heavy pressure there and pulling up and lightening it quite quickly and just bringing this little bit dark side down here and then blend it all together. 
Okay, so there you go. So let's talk about the stock as well. If your light source is coming from this direction, this part of the stock here is going to be in shade because it goes up inside the cup. So we're going to have a dark part here. So that's heavy pressure. And again, very quickly though, I'm just blending that out a bit lighter. But also if it's coming from this side, eventually down this side, the light is going to, is going to hit this side of the stock. So you're going to want to leave that pale. But that also means that this side is going to be in shadow if that side's in the light. Now again, what that helps you do is give the appearance of the the round the round roundedness, goodness me, the, the roundness of the stock, which is a really quick and effective way again to add depth and that sort of three D element to your picture. So all I'm going to do is run a heavy line right down along beside the line art here, and then use my little circular motions just to put a sort of feathery edge on it and gradually make that lighter as I come out towards this side on the light source. There you go, it is that simple. Now, if you if you think it's not dramatic enough, you can go back in like I'm doing now and just make that side a little bit darker and then just lighten up your pressure. Again, use layers if you have room. You know, if it's not a tight little fiddly space, take your time and build those layers in because it really, really makes a difference. All right, so you can see there, that is basically us covered the whole of the toadstooliness. Now I've just got a little group down here, which I am going to color collectively to show you that it's the impact, it's the combination of these things that we're talking about when you put them all together that really makes a difference to the picture. One thing I'd like to mention at this point is that when you are practicing this, especially if you're not sure about your um, pressure control, it is easier to do it with lighter shades like yellows and oranges and pale pinks until you get used to what you're doing and you feel like you're in control. Um, starting off with a dark colour like this purple probably isn't the best idea if you're not 100% confident in what you're doing. Now you can see down here that um, I have kept this side very dark and I am basically on the premise that this is tucked in behind these two so not as much of the light is going to get to this little spotty guy at the back so I want to make that dark too. 
Now again, if you're in any doubt, you can play about even things like salt and pepper shakers, anything that's kicking about on your desk or, you know, in your kitchen or your lounge or whatever it is that you colour. Um, you know, if you're not sure about light bouncing off things or what it should look like, stick a few um, items in front of each other. One of, one of my, uh, my favourites is actually using chess pieces. Um, because they are, you know, they're they're quite tall and they have varying heights. They're quite handy and they're small enough that you can just manoeuvre them around. Again, this is casting a shadow on the stalk, so I've got that nice and dark up there. And then I'm just going to try and lessen my pressure out a bit. Keep this side nice and dark too. Again, I'm not entirely sure. This is this is quite a tangle of um, of mushrooms, so I'm not entirely sure how much, if any, light would be showing here. But for effect, and again, in the interest of keeping everything uniform, that's what I've done there, um, and that's really just for um, artistic effect. <laughs> As I say, I don't claim for any of this to be a hundred percent technical or anything like it. Um, that's not what this is about. This is about making drawings look lovely and having an impact to them. That is the name of the game. So this one, because it's at a slightly jaunty angle, um, that is more or less just a straight gradient up the side so we can just go for it and do that. That looks quite good as well. Go back over this a little bit, make it darker. There we go. And the same with the stock, because it's kind of facing in the same direction, isn't it? It looks quite similar. I made this easy for myself. <laughs> I like to do that, you know make things easy for myself there we go and just to finish off I'm going to make this quite dark in here on this side now I think some of the light might creep in there because of the angles so I'm going to make that dark and just come up to light just a tiny little bit there we go so there you have it so you can see that does look quite effective it looks quite nice it looks quite pretty and um, that is so simple to do really straightforward and everyone can do it back to the same thing the same with the first lesson this does not require skill all you have to do is have a think before you start and decide where the light source is coming from and have a think about the items that you're colouring and know where your light side and your dark side is going to be before you start. If you plan that out, then you're absolutely golden. You are quids in. So I hope this has been uh, interesting for you. The other thing I wanted to do just before I finish up is to show you the pencils that I've been using in case you want to use similar colours or you've just seen one and think, oh, that's a pretty colour. So I have Jade Green, which is PC1021. It's really difficult with these silvery writing, silvery writing. There we go. PC1021, Jade Green. I have Pomegranate, PC195. I have oh, Dioxazine Purple Hue. That's a mouthful. Dioxazine Purple Hue, PC132. And finally, I have, <coughs> excuse me, China Blue, which is PC1100. So there you go, just in case you wanted any of them. As I said before, if you like this video, please, please, please give it a thumbs up because that really helps me out. I am in the infancy of my channel, so any thumbs up are good thumbs. I am completely open to feedback, so if you would like to leave me some comments uh, in the section below, that would be absolutely lovely as well. I'd really appreciate that. I'm open to all constructive criticism or even any suggestions of other videos that you would like to see here in the Colour Cave. So that would be absolutely fabulous. And if you haven't subscribed already and you like this kind of thing, please hit the little subscribe button and you can hit the bell as well and you will get a little notification when I post a video, which at the moment is running once every four days-ish approximately. And I fully intend to upload new content at least once a week. Okay, guys, I hope you have a good day and thank you very much for joining me all the way till the end. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.